Okay, this is uh, video 3.2, so we're continuing our lectures on union and intersections and how they relate to probabilities. So with this part two, so um, let's let's do a little exercise here. Consider the experiment of randomly drawing a single card from a standard deck, and let C be the event that the card is a club. Let F be the event that it's a face card. Complete the tasks and compute the indicated probabilities in exact reduced fractional form. Also approximate the probabilities to the nearest whole number percent. So the first thing I would like you to do is construct a Venn diagram illustrating these two events. Now your diagram, enter, don't actually enter all the card names, but only the sizes of the various parts. So in other words, rather than, you know, if, if there's, if there are, rather than listing all 12 face cards, uh, you just put a 12 in that, or maybe uh, maybe not put a 12, but the numbers inside that should add up to 12. Okay, uh, press pause now. Okay, so the way you do this is you start in the middle and work out. Here's clubs, here's face card, there are some, and here's a sample space here. Notice that there are three cards that are both face cards and clubs. There are nine other face cards that are not clubs for a total of 12 clubs here, or 12 face cards here. And there are 10 other cards that are clubs, but they're not the three face cards. So there are 13 cards that are clubs altogether. Now, if you add that together, that's uh, 22. And you subtract that from 52, you see that there are 30 other cards that are out here. Now, we could, <coughs> we could actually do this by actually listing all the cards out. So instead of the three, we could actually write king of clubs, queen of clubs, jack of clubs, and over here we'd have ace of clubs, deuce of clubs, three of clubs, four of clubs, so forth. Here we would have uh, king, of uh, king of hearts, queen of diamonds, etc. And out here we might have something like the seven of spades. But to do that, we'd have to list all 52 things, and that's not really necessary. Here, we could just, if we just know that this set right here, the part that's a club that's not a face card, is 10 of them, that there's 10 of them there, that's all we really need to know. And we really just need to know that there are three cards that are both clubs and face cards, and so forth. Now, using this, we should be able to answer several different probability questions now. So here's our Venn diagram again. Now, see if you can compute these probabilities uh, exactly in reduced fraction form and then also approximately rounded to the nearest whole number per percent. So the probability of club, the probability of face card, and so forth. And notice there are some complements here. Press pause and work this out now. Well, there are uh, if we look at the clubs, we see there are 13 in there. We know there's a total of 52 altogether. That's 13.50 seconds or one fourth, 25%. Face car, uh, if you look here, there are a total here of, of um, 12 of, of those face cards. That's 12.50 seconds, 13, uh, 3 thirteenths, about 23% approximately. A face card and a club, there are three of those. The exact value is 3.50 seconds. That's approximately 6%. A face card or a club, we could add uh, the 10, the 3, and the 9 together for a total of 22 out of 52, or 11, 26, or about 42%. The non-face cards, it's 1 minus the probability of a face card. I could, add, I could get the non-face cards by adding the 30 and the 10 if we wanted to. Okay. Or I could do, uh, and then get 40 out of 52, or I could just subtract the, the 12 face cards so I could get uh, get that. We already did the probability of a face card was 3 thirteenths, so one way to do that would be 1 minus 3 thirteenths, which would be 10 thirteenths, or 77% approximately. This is, now let's be careful here, these last two are a little interesting. Face intersect clubs, but the complement of that. So, so, so in other words, it's not these three cards. So that's one minus the probability of a face and a club, 
which we already figured out to be 350 seconds, so 1 minus that would be 4950 seconds, or about 94%. The complement of a face union club, this is a face or a club, but not that, not a face or a club. So we take the face or a club, which is these 10, 3, and 9 together, which we already figured out to be 1126 probability, and then we just do 1 minus that, that's 1526, or 58 percent. So notice I used the fact that some, I'd already figured out some probabilities and then used that complementary probability rule there. Okay, next I want to look at what something is, uh, at something here called a cross tabulation table. So I have uh, a coin collection, let's say, of nickels, dimes, and quarters. I have some from the 19th century and some from the 20th century, say some American currency here. And part of this table is filled out for us. Can we fill out the rest? See if you can fill this out. Press pause and come back when you have it done. Well, we can fill it out. Let's see. If there are 25 nickels in the 19th century and 53 in the 20th, that makes 78 nickels altogether. If there are 55 total dimes and 23 are in the 20th century, we subtract to get 32 dimes from the 19th century. Now let's see here. Uh, okay, if you take 78 plus 55 plus 76, that gives us 200 coins altogether. Um, the 77 minus the 32 minus the 25 gives us a 20. And then there's a couple of ways to figure out the 47. Now you could do, uh, well, one way is the 67 minus the 20. That would give it. And if you add these three together, you get the 123. And these two add to together to get 200. So that's that's a couple of different, at least one of the ways we can go at that. So these are, this is a frequency cross tabulation table. So what does this mean? This means there are 25 nickels that are, that are nickels and 19th century coins. 23 that are 20th century coins and dimes. 55 that are dimes regardless of century. 123 that are 20th century regardless of the type of coin. So this is a frequency table here. Make this into a relative frequency table, considering them as relative frequencies as a percentage or fraction of the total 200. Okay, so use this in decimal form. When you get done, come back. Press pause now. So all we're doing is we're taking each of these numbers and dividing by 200. So this is 1 here, and each of these now... Uh, 25 divided by 200 is 0.125 and so forth. Again, these should still sum up correctly as you're coming down the columns or across the rows. Uh, but these now are relative frequencies. Now, suppose we take the event that we're drawing. a. We've got these coins all mixed up randomly. And what's the event that we pull out a single coin? Then the probability that it's a nickel and a 19th century coin is 0.125. The probability that it's a dime is 0.275. The probability that it's a 20th century coin is 0.615 and so forth. So use this table now, here it is again, to find these probabilities. The probability that it's 19th century and a nickel. The probability that it's 20th century or a quarter. The probability of a dime or the probability of a 20th century coin if we're drawing one coin at random from the whole group. When you've got these figured out, come back. Press pause now. Well, uh, I could symbolically write this as the probability of, of a type of a type one coin, 19th century, intersected with a n, a nickel. So what is the probability there? Well, it's 25 of those out of 200. So it's 25 two hundredths, uh, or the point 0.125. 20th century or quarter. Well, the ones that are 20th century or quarters, we could get the quantity by adding the 20, the 47, the 23, and the 53. Of course, these three are already added up to 123, so 20 plus 123 will also do it, which is 143 out of 200. Okay. Okay, I had some wrong numbers in there, but I fixed them now. 
So this is equivalent to adding up these probabilities, the 0 0.1, the 0 0.265, the 0 0.115, and the 0 0.235. Or, of course, these three add up to 0 0.615. You can add that to the 0 0.1, which is 0 0.715. That's exactly what you get if you take 124, or 143, excuse me, and divide by 200. The probability of dime is right here, 0 0.215. 275, or in other words, 55 divided by 200. And the probability it's a 20th century coin, probability of a type 2 coin, is then 0.615, or 123 over 200. All right, this uh, exercise here, I want you to do a Venn diagram here. So an instructor polled students going on a European Maymaster trip concerning their ability to speak certain languages of the countries that they were going to visit. He found that 13 of the students speak French, and 10 speak Italian, and 8 speak German. 5 speak German and French, 4 speak French and Italian, and 3 speak Italian and German, and one student speaks all three of them. Now there are 30 students in the class and now they may speak some other languages besides these three like maybe English uh, but this is this Venn diagram is only going to be concerned with these three so let's let F stand for French, I for Italian, G for German and um, make a Venn diagram indicating the sizes of the various parts of the diagram and then see if you can answer the question, how many students spoke none of these three languages? Okay, let me give you a hint. Start in the middle and work out. When you get this worked out, come back. Press pause now. So where we start is right here in the middle. There's three sets. There could possibly be uh, all these possible overlaps. And in fact, there is one student who speaks all three languages. So that one goes there. Now work your way out to get these three numbers, the three, four, and two. So let's see how we did that. So let's see, five speak German and French. Well, one of those speaks all three, so we've got that one accounted for. That leaves four that speak French and German, but not Italian. Four speak French and Italian. So there's gotta be four in here, and we've already got one of them, so that leaves three here, speaking French and Italian, but not German. And similarly, three speak Italian and German. We already have one of them accounted for, so at least two that speak Italian and German, but not French. Now, let's go back, keep working our way out. Thirteen speak French. Well, we already have, let's see, four plus one plus three. That's eight accounted for. Thirteen minus eight, that's five. So there are five that speak French, but not the other two languages. Uh, similarly, 10 speak Italian, and we have already accounted for 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. 3 plus 1 plus 2, 6 of them. So that's uh, 10 minus 6 is 4, so that leaves 4 that speak Italian, but not the other two. And there's only one that speaks German, but not the other two, because 8 speak German, and if you notice, 4 plus 1 plus 2 is 7, so we've already accounted for 7 of the German speakers, leaving only one here. Now, if you add up all these numbers right here, you see 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 1. If you add up all of those, uh, let's see, what does that turn out to be? Well, that turns out to be 20. And there are 30 students all together, so there must be 10 not accounted for. They're out here in the sample space, but are not uh, in any of these. So there are 10 students who speak, uh, who do not speak French, German, or Italian.